In this video, I want to share with you an e-commerce SEO checklist to help you rank your new store on Google for free traffic. If this is your first time here, welcome to the Nerds of E-commerce. My name is David and together with Andrew, we decided to start this channel because we fell in love with e-commerce and we want to share everything we know when it comes to building, optimizing and scaling an e-commerce store. As usual, if you found this video to be super helpful, make sure you gently, gently smash that like button because that really helps out the channel a lot. And without further ado, let's go. This e-commerce SEO checklist is going to be in two segments. You have the essentials, which are non-negotiable if you want organic sales from Google. And then there is the advanced for basically people who want to scale their store to the moon in the future. Okay, so let's start off with the essentials. One of the first things we need to tick off is having the right tools. I'm pretty sure you've heard of Google Analytics already. This is essentially an analytics tool provided by Google, which allows you to see what channel is bringing in sessions and what channel is bringing in revenue. Now, this is really important as you build up your organic traffic, you wanna see whether your traffic is actually converting. Now, if it's not converting, then we'll have to troubleshoot to understand why it's not converting. Are we ranking for the right terms? Are we not ranking for the right terms? Maybe there's something wrong with the page. So so Google Analytics is really, really important for us to troubleshoot and attribute revenue to the organic channel. The next tool that's really important to us is Google Search Console. Think of Google Search Console as the Google Analytics tool, but purely, purely for organic traffic. Now in Google Analytics, we actually can't see what kind of search terms are people searching in order to find your particular page or a store. And in Google Search Console, that's when you understand what people are searching for to find your stores, what page is driving a tons of traffic, tons of organic traffic that is. But the problem with Google Search Console is that you can't see how much money individual keywords bring in. So Google Analytics and Google Search Console are essentially must have tools if you do wanna work on SEO. Now the second essential item on our e-commerce SEO checklist is having an SEO plan. Now there are four components to the SEO plan. There's the keyword research, there is a collection page clusters, you have the URL structure, and also the internal linking strategy. Don't worry, for each of these topics, we will go in depth in future videos, but everything starts off with keyword research because we have to optimize for what people are actually searching for. And the good thing is Andrew just did a video on that. So if you're interested, I'll leave a link in the description below so you can go check it out after you finish watching this one. Now, after you have your keyword research, you want to tackle the rest of these components. Now on the point of collection and category cluster, what you're really doing is that with the keywords that you've researched, you want to pre-plan and visualize what that looks like on paper. For example, let's say we're optimizing for bed sheets. There are many different types of bed sheets. You have cotton bed sheets, you have tensile bed sheets, and you also have linen bed sheets. But together, they make a neighborhood of collection. Now, in order for Google to understand what this neighborhood of content is, we want to make sure that we link everything together to help Google understand that if a user go on the tensile sheets collections page, this is part of the broader bed sheets category. It's all about helping Google understand what this entire neighborhood of content is about. And once you visualize this on paper, these gray links are essentially internal links. If you don't pre-plan this, what will happen is that it will make an internal linking strategy very complicated and very, very messy. So we always like to pre-plan this and visualize this just so that we know exactly what we need to link together. I'll show you what an internal link look like in just a second. But one of the other really important thing is your URL structure. Now, if you're on a Shopify store, this part is not changeable it will always be collections so if you went with this cluster you essentially have four collection pages because it will be yourcompany.com slash collections slash bedsheets url structure is also really important because this is one of the first thing google reads to understand what this page is about if you have planned this it will make the url structure significantly easier now if you have a store that is not a shopify store this is where pre-planning helps you out even more because you have control over what this category is so this can be bed sheets and then the subcategory could be cotton sheets an internal link i'm pretty sure you've come across that before but if you ever been to a web page and you see a certain text is in a different color and if you click on it it goes to a different area of the website. That's essentially what an internal link is. Now, the third essential item on our e-commerce SEO checklist is page optimizations. Now, these are just more for hygiene reasons, and it's all just helping Google understand 
what this page is about. Now, Google put a lot of emphasis on H1 tags. Now, H1 tags is essentially the title of the page. Again, don't worry, we'll have a future video dedicated just for this. So in the meantime, what you really need to know is that the title of the page needs to be short and sweet, which also play into point number two. Now, if your page title is greater than 60 characters, what will happen is that as you search for that result, it will get cut off like so. Same with the meta description, which is the text underneath the title. Again, it will get cut off. And human-friendly and original collection and product page descriptions is more for one, helping Google understand what this page is about. And two, you wanna spend time writing copy to persuade the user to purchase the product. And the last thing is alternate text on images. Google can't read images yet. So you have to actually mark the image with alternate text so that Google can understand what the image is about. Now this is quite labor intensive. So I recommend you to automate alt text on images as much as you can. If you have a Shopify store and this is something that you're currently working on, check out my Shopify SEO app video on how to automate just that. Now the fourth essential item we have on our e-commerce SEO checklist is whether your store is mobile optimized. Now that sounds like a no brainer, but you'd be very surprised in terms of how many e-commerce stores out there are still not very usable on mobile. So one of the more important things to do, especially if you want free traffic from Google is you wanna make sure that your store is actually usable on mobile. Now the second point, which is also really important is how fast does your website load? Personally, we use two tools to help us understand one, whether the website is mobile friendly and two, we use GT metrics to assess how fast does the website load. And it will also give you recommendations in terms of what you need to do to help your website to become even faster. Now, one of the main reasons why we've dedicated a specific point on this checklist for mobile optimization is that one, the speed of your website on mobile affects how you rank on Google and two, more importantly, as you can see on this graph here, mobile sales has been growing quite fast over the last couple of years. So you wanna make sure that your store can actually cater to people, a big portion of people actually, to purchase products from your store. Now the rest of this checklist is for people and company who want to scale their store to the moon. One of the main reasons why I left these items last is because it takes a significant investment of time and money to make this work. But the reward means that you no longer have to pay so much money on Facebook ads. And it means that there's a free and organic source of traffic coming onto your website and buying products without you paying for it. And if that's something that you're still interested in, keep watching. Okay, so you're here for a reason because you want to scale your store to the moon. And one of the more important things is that after you've done some of the essentials, you'll find yourself in this position that how do I get more traffic because I did all that I could on the essentials. Trust me, the essentials is going to take a while to complete, but you will come to a point eventually that there's not, not much more that you can work on. So the next level is having a content SEO plan. Now this involves producing blog posts, YouTube videos. And this is one of the reasons why it does take time and money because this is a lot more labor intensive. But the most important thing you need to know when it comes to content SEO is that you wanna produce content that will really help out your customers. Because at the end of the day, Google's job is to provide the most relevant answer. And for you to play part in their mission in providing the most relevant answer, you have to produce content that will provide the most relevant answer for your potential customers. Now we will go through this in detail in terms of how you tackle content SEO step-by-step step in the future. But all you really need to know when it comes to content SEO is providing and creating the most relevant content for your customers to make a right choice for themselves. Now, one of the last item I have on these e-commerce SEO checklist is product reviews. I'm sure you're already aware of how important these reviews are for the customers to make a purchasing decision. 95% of people will go search for a review before they make a purchasing decision. So it's actually really important to not just work on product reviews on your product page, but also on external sites like Trustpilot. Now, the good thing about having additional product reviews on your product page is that it's an additional piece of content. And that would enable you to rank for longer tail keywords on Google, which means additional traffic, which also means additional sales. Now, I wanna make a really important note here. For this e-commerce SEO checklist, I purposely left out reputation building, or in another words, link building, because the process is actually quite complicated. It's not as straightforward as it seems. And frankly, if you haven't done the essentials, link building is not gonna help you. So we will talk about link building separately in another video because it really deserves that much attention. And that's it for this video. So. 
Thank you so much for watching this video all the way to the end. If you want a PDF version of the checklist, I'll leave a link in the description below. And also, if you found this video helpful, make sure you gently, gently smash that like button because that really helps out our channel a lot. And like I mentioned throughout the video, we're gonna do more deep dives into each of the components that we mentioned in the checklist so that you know how to apply it to your own store yourself. So make sure you subscribe, click onto the bell, so when we release future videos, you'll be the first one to know. And until next time, thank you again. See you soon.